There's one type of attack in particular that will net an attacker millions and millions of dollars. And it's fairly straightforward to execute. We're talking about ransomware. Ransomware has been a pain for many organizations over the last five to six years. And attackers are taking full advantage of that to extort victims into getting, on average, hundreds of thousands of dollars in a single attack. So let's break this down. Let's figure out how do attackers do this? How do they get into the environment? How do they deploy ransomware that's yielding them so much money? Let's start off with talking about what ransomware is. It's a fairly basic type of attack where all the threat actor is doing is getting access into an environment and then running some scripts that are going to encrypt all the files and systems in the environment. And when we're talking about encryption, this is basically just garbling up the contents of the files, so it's gonna be unreadable. So the user or the victim organization is not gonna be able to access those files. But the attacker is doing it in such a way that they can provide a decryption key for a price that will allow the victim to decrypt those files and then presumably resume business. Now, the attacker is doing this because they're trying to extort the victim. The, ex the ransomware itself encrypting the files is just a way to get leverage, to try to force the victim into paying that ransom to get that decryption key. So there's a lot of steps that have to happen before the attacker can get to ransomware deployment. So let's dig into those now. It all starts with an initial point of compromise. And so the attackers have to break into the environment in the first place. Now, some of the most common mechanisms that attackers are using to break in that ultimately lead to a ransomware attack are three things. Number one, remote access. So Windows Remote Desktop is one of the most popular ways attackers are doing this. Essentially, these attackers are just brute forcing their way in where they're just guessing the username and passwords to get access into the environment. Uh, if you're using Windows RP, R, RDP and you're using weak passwords, this is a very common way that attackers can just break in. Uh, sometimes what we'll see is attackers will do that. They'll then package that up and then sell that through a, an access broker to another attacker that is ultimately gonna use that to come into the environment and deploy ransomware. Another way we see this is through phishing emails. So this is where so an attacker is gonna send an email that has a malicious payload that payload is going to infect a user's workstation with malware, uh, and then that malware is going to allow the attacker the ability to interact with that system, and then from there, they'll conduct the rest of the attack leading to ransomware. The third way we see this, and this is one is growing more and more in popularity, is external vulnerabilities. And so this is gonna be some sort of either application or device that the attacker is going to find a vulnerability on uh, and then exploit that to gain access into the environment. Typically what we find is that this is gonna allow them the ability to execute remote commands uh, on that device or that application or that system uh, and uh, create a bit of a foothold there that they can then use to further uh, entrench themselves into the environment. As they entrench themselves in the environment, they're gonna be establishing a larger foothold. And so typically this is gonna be by deploying additional backdoors uh, to that initial system that will allow them access back in so they don't have to re-compromise that. Uh, and we also see a lot of post-exploitation frameworks that get dropped on these systems. One of the more popular ones is something called Cobalt Strike. Essentially, it just takes all these different attacker tools packages them into one solution. The attacker can install that, they'll have remote access into that system, they'll be able to move laterally to other systems, they'll be able to run exploits. It really is just a one and, uh, one and all solution that attackers can use to, to kind of move rampant throughout the environment. Now, as they're doing that, the attackers are gonna escalate their privileges. Most attacks don't win the lottery at, at day one where they're gonna break in and get full admin access on the very first shot. Typically what's gonna have to happen is they're gonna try to either dump credentials on the system they got access to, or they might move to other systems and try to dump credentials, or they'll just search and scan the environment for some sort of vulnerability uh, that they can exploit to then escalate their privileges 
with the goal of getting to an admin account. In a Windows environment, this is the domain admin account that will allow them to log into any system. Again, Cobalt Strike makes this super easy because all of these things are packaged into one solution. So the attacker can just you know try all these things out and see what works, makes their job a lot easier. So after the attackers are gonna create that foothold and get some better privileges, they're gonna start the internal recon phase. This is where we'll see some basic network scanning, just trying to get a lay of the land, see what's out there. They might do some research in Active Directory to see the systems that are there uh, or the different privileged accounts, AKA also trying to target who has domain admin in the environment. Uh, and at this point, they'll start logging into systems and that introduces us into this lateral movement phase. And so for this, again, they're just logging into different systems, trying to get a better sense of the environment. Uh, some of the ways that we're seeing lateral movement could be Windows PowerShell, uh, where they can interact with different systems through the command line, uh, or we'll see Windows RDP, that's remote desktop. One of the more popular ways gives a graphical representation of the system and attackers can just kind of poke around wherever they want. Now, all of this stuff leads in where the attacker is getting more and more familiar with the environment. I always say that after an attack, uh, the attacker knows more about your environment than you do because they've just become so knowledgeable about all the nooks and crannies in that environment. Now, the attacker will typically find a deployment point in the environment. This is usually gonna be a server, oftentimes an Active Directory server because that's gonna have access to the most number of systems. Uh, they'll use this data that they, they collected during the recon um, and from that, they'll put some scripts together and that will deploy the ransomware executable out to the entire environment. Uh, and then that will encrypt those systems. And then for the victim, suddenly they'll wake up and say, hey, we can't access our systems. And that's when you'll really start recognizing that there's a ransomware attack that is happening. And that's it. That's how a ransomware attack happens. If you like this video, smash the like button, leave a comment, ask questions, uh, and let me know what we can do with some future videos. And as always, subscribe to the channel. It helps bring awareness to everyone else about cybersecurity and help them in their careers. All right, we'll see you later.